If you run ads to generate lead on Facebook, and I'm talking about ads that run through a landing page, not using the lead generation objective in Facebook's native lead form, I'm talking you send them off to your website to a landing page to ultimately capture some information and generate a lead. You probably know how to use custom conversions right here to create a conversion event whenever somebody reaches a specific URL. So whenever they reach your thank you page URL, you trigger a conversion event. Well, I'm going to show you how to set that up using Facebook's standard events. And this is important for two reasons. Number one, because if you ever change your URL, well, then you lose all of the data that Facebook has on that conversion, right? This is pegged to your URL. If that URL changes, and sometimes uh, that might be planned, it might be unplanned. Sometimes weird things happen with URLs. If you've ever done any work on Facebook ads uh, in doing this, you know just kind of how much of a head ringer it can be trying to make sure all your URLs match for the conversion event. But also in my testing, I have found that ads optimizing for a conversion using a standard event code perform better. I've been testing this now for the last few months. And interestingly enough, these ad sets that are optimizing for a conversion event using standard event code are doing better. It is the weirdest freaking thing. And one of the other things too, I'll kind of further add with that is the data that it reports back from the insights in the ads manager is actually better. It actually captures more data, or at least it's displaying more data from those events coming from the standard events code. So I have been slowly shifting all of my ads and all of my ad sets and everything I'm doing in advertising over to using that standard event code, along with the conversion API, which I made a video to a few days ago. I'll link it, link to it in the description below. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the standard event code to track different types of leads because that's not immediate clear, immediately clear. In Facebook's documentation, you know, they say, use this event code here to track a lead. Well, that just triggers for one lead, right? Like how do you actually track different types of leads, okay? So let's go through here and sort this out. How do we use this standard event code to track different types of leads? Well, let me show you the example I'm gonna be running through, and that is just a basic thank you page, getting it to trigger when we reach the thank you page, which is typically how lead, uh, lead generation works. It's optimizing for that event. Somebody completes their information, they reach the thank you page, boom, they're a lead, all right? So here we are on the thank you page. Now, I've already got my whole uh, site pixeled. So I've got my site pixeled. What we need to do now is create the standard event code that we are going to use. And if you come in here to, which tab is it? Probably events manager. Let me go back out of that. All right, so we're in the events manager. If you come here to all tools, look for events manager and maybe down here, that's where we are. Uh, and we come here and we go to add events from a new website or from the pixel. I'm not really sure which way which way is best, but uh, if we come through here and get to all this, it'll eventually come here to this, you know, install events code, all right? And this is essentially what we're gonna be using. And you can find a full list of standard events. Where are they? Somewhere down, somewhere down here. Somewhere there's a full list of them, right? And one of them is, the lead code, and we need this code uh, to fire on our website, but first we have to decipher or set it up so that it can tell us what kind of lead it is, right? If we're running two different types of leads, we need to know, be able to know how to track and report and optimize for those. So when you see this code right here, you can modify this in two ways, all right? I'm gonna show you these. Uh, I'm gonna show you kind of the formal way, I guess, and then more of the hack way but the hack way works fine. I really don't think it's a hack. So you take this code and you need it to run on your website. And here we go. You need it to load, run or trigger on your website um, with some type of identifying information. So if we modify the code, let's forget about this one down here for a second. If we modify the code to add a parameter, we can put whatever we want in there, right? And this is how you do it. So uh, we'll come Let's just delete these rows. That's the easiest way to get back up here to the top, right? Let's forget about this one down here for now. There we go, now it's hidden. Uh, if we modify this, so you can see what I did, we put a parameter code in it as well. Now we can put whatever we want in there to identify the lead, 
All right, I, I don't know if it'll work with spaces. I use hyphens, but you could use underscores in there. I have not tried running it without spaces. I would not expect that to work. Spaces in these types of identifiers typically don't work out too well. So we simply modify the code to have this kind of little bracket thing here open up. Boom, content name, and then this. So this is a parameter that we put on the code. The other option that you have, when this is more of the hack way of doing it, uh, but I do it, is just creating your own custom event, which is right here, track, and then whatever you want to, excuse me, whatever you want to put there. I just put my lead and then my type of lead in there, right? And getting those to fire on that page will trigger, you know, the event, the applicable event that you use, and there's a way of tracking it, right? So, uh, well, let's just kind of go in here and talk about how we actually put that on the page. All right, to do this, we're going to need to get the actual pixel code. We're going to need to modify it a little bit. Now, mind you, keep in mind, I said that my website here already has the Facebook pixel on it, all right? But we're still going to get the pixel code. This is the easiest way I found of doing it here, and it causes no conflict or problems. We're going to get our full pixel code, all right? So add events um, from a new website and then install code manually, copy code, right? So here's the pixel code right there. Now you can see it's in here tracking, I don't know what this is, uh, but it's tracking page view, right? So we need to add whatever we wanna add, our other tracking mechanisms into this pixel. And we could, well, we'll take the first one that has the parameter on it. And then we'll also take the custom event that we created right there. And we'll put that Right in there, we'll delete the line break, right? So now this thing's tracking page view, it's tracking our lead with the parameter. And then it is also tracking uh, our unique lead. Our custom event is what that is. It'll just come up as unique lead, and I'm gonna spell that correctly, all right? Boom. So you can see what I got and what I added in there, all right? So now we got that, now we can just put this code on the page. But if you're following me here and you're familiar with the pixel, you might be saying, all right, well, isn't your code already on the entire website? Yes, the code is on the entire website without these two things. Uh, however, placing it on there in full again with these two things will not cause any duplication. The browser, or not the browser, but Facebook will be able to detect you know, that this is the same thing. So it won't duplicate page views or anything like that. All right. So we're gonna put this on the page again. So it's fundamentally kind of like got the same bit of code on it. You know, all this stuff is on there twice, just in the second instance, it's got that. So if we come back to our thank you page and it might already be on mine. I'm gonna put it in here. Yeah, it's already on mine. You can see it right there, but I guess just for the sake of display, I will delete it. Boom, delete, and then I will copy it again out of here and save it. And uh, this one should go in the body. If it's in the header, it usually won't cause a problem. But we're gonna do it in the body, right? Okay, so it's loaded. So now let's look at what this looks like from the pixel helper. And I've went to the page that's triggering that standard event, okay? And if we come here to the pixel helper in Chrome, you can see it's got our page view that's standard. It's not loading two page views. It's loading our custom event right here, which is lead unique. So that's one way that you could trigger it. And then it's loading lead. And if you go to content name, it has the parameter that I put in there, which is my dash product. And I'm pretty sure that's what I put in here. Oh no. Mine here says the lead type. I guess I, guess I changed that. Hold on. I changed it between when I put it on here, right? And when I did this. This is the lead type, and that says the lead type. So you can see how it's reporting. That's what we really want to take away. Um, where is it? Lead, our lead event has the co content name, the parameter content name, the lead type. And that matches what I've got right here. Whatever we put here, you know, will work. We can put my dash product in there. I don't know if I had that capitalized or not. I don't think I capitalized on it. We'll go low cap, low, little caps on that. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just important that you have that consistent if you're tracking the same lead event on different pages. But uh, we need to save that. And then if we come back to Chrome, you'll see, you'll see it loads in there again as the content parameter. So lead content name has my product. Whatever you put in for your parameter is what it'll load, okay? And then um, with the custom event here, whatever you put in for that custom event to track, which is this little line right there, it's gonna load right here. So far, pretty straightforward stuff. Now, no matter what you do to this URL, those events will still work. Okay, so let me show you how to select them in the ads manager. If you are doing the custom event, creating your own custom event and naming it, uh, this is easier to optimize for. It's, it's easier to set up an ads manager. So if we come here to ads manager, right? We set up a new campaign that's going for conversions. Well, down here where we select our conversion event, you will see it popping up, that event, okay? All right, so remember lead unique is that lead has its own parameter on it, okay? But um, if we're going lead unique, you know, that's only loading on whatever page we have the code on. Lead, if you have multiple types of lead set up with content or custom parameters, as I displayed in this example, and mind you, like I said, there's, you know, there's no, I shouldn't say there's no right way. I guess there is no right way. Uh, the formal way would be to do this, but this works just as well, and this is what I'm doing. So I've got, you know, lead unique type one, right? And then I've got another one for lead unique type two, right? And then you can just select those right here in this. Now, if you're doing it by using this and using that content name parameter, then there's another step you have to go through. And to do that, you wanna come in here and you wanna define a new custom conversion, okay? And conversion event equals, you could do that custom event that we created, but we're gonna do the standard event because we use standard event code we just added a content name parameter onto it. Then we're gonna come down here, we're gonna select event parameters, and now we can put whatever our parameter is. Now, uh, if you've been following along, you should know that on the live site, we have a different parameter than what's in my file there. I changed it to something like my product, but we can just come right here where it says lead content name. We'll just copy that. We could type it out, I know what it is, but I just like to be certain that we got the right thing. Content name contains, I guess in this case it doesn't really matter uh, whether we do contains or equals, right? Give it a name. Custom conversion from standard event for my product, whatever we wanna name it and then create it, and then if we were to click create, I'm not gonna save this, uh, but if we were to, you would be able to select it right there. So that is how you set up standard events to track different types of leads, and like I said, I found that using the standard event code has uh, resulted in an improved, significantly improved performance over using URL match custom conversions.